And now, now, Laramie Live on KOWB continues on AM 1290. 8-12 here on your Wednesday morning. My pleasure to welcome in studio. He is an associate professor in the College of Law at the University of Wyoming, also director of the Prosecution Assistance Program, adjunct professor of African American and Diaspora Studies at the University of Wyoming. Daryl D. Jackson joins me in studio. Good morning. How are you today? Mr. Settle, it's an honor to be here. Doing well this morning. Uh, appreciate your time. A uh, big time event coming in, and I know concerts and convocation sponsoring this event, but uh, an attorney coming in to talk about uh, uh, an interesting case, uh, and, and this uh, will be a moderated discussion, I know, regarding the systemic failures of the criminal justice system, but uh, w- give us a little background. For folks that are not familiar with the, the Stephen Avery uh, case in terms of Dean A. String is the attorney coming in, and uh, known for the Netflix documentary Making a Murder. I think they had, uh, what was it, about 10 episodes, I think they put right, out exactly, there? 10. Okay, so give us a little background in terms of folks who may not be familiar with what we're talking about here, because this is... This stems from a, a trial of a man out in Wisconsin. So I think Netflix is capitalizing on some of the commercial success of other shows, and probably most recently NPR's Serial Podcast, which was probably 10 or 12 episodes as well. Um, and Netflix saw the opportunity to, uh, I guess, ground itself in an investigation that sounds like it was about 10 years old, where some directors went out to Wisconsin and uh, found a case that clearly had some appeal. Uh, about a guy named Stephen Avery who had been convicted of a sexual assault um, of a woman in a county. It's a smaller county in Wisconsin. Uh, He served some 18 years for Mm -hmm. this uh, sexual assault and the entire time continued to claim his innocence. Uh, He never wavered even when apparently there were suggestions that he could get out of jail early if he just said he did it. And he continued to state that I I can't tell a lie. I won't say I did something when I didn't do it, even if it gets me out early. Turns out DNA evidence caught up with the times and the DNA suggested that he was not likely the person that did it. And then they identified a different person who had been a suspect. Wow. uh, Back in the day. And the police department, law enforcement, um, and generally had known about this individual, had a record about this individual, but had failed to fully investigate the individual in the same way that they had investigated Mr. Avery. Okay, so we're talking about a wrongful sexual assault conviction, and so uh, Netflix steps in, looks at this, and, and, and you look at some of the uh, the wrong finger pointing, I guess, for lack of a better term right. in this case. They, they, they saw that as a good grounding for obvious reasons. If soon after he gets out and files a $36 million wrongful imprisonment case saying look you guys had the evidence you guys knew this was a problem for so many reasons i sat in jail this entire time and lost a good portion of my life based on your actions i think this is worth two million dollars for every year of my life that i spent in jail Um, clearly for a small county that was not an insignificant amount of money and the suggestion that netflix then makes is they decided to find a way to punish him for making them look bad Uh, That's the suggestion Netflix seems to kind of put forward. Um, He ends up getting charged with the murder of a young photographer, a woman who came out to his property to photo a car that was for sale on Car Trader or one of the other selling points. Okay. Um, And she disappears. He's the last one that ever sees her. Uh, She disappears. And then there's a long litany of investigative faux pas that problematize the entire investigation of Mr. Avery. He ends up being charged with the murder because they find her bones on his property. They find some blood on his property, uh, on her car that's on his property. They find a key in his bedroom. A variety of things that are challenged within the series, uh, whether or not it was really on his property or whether it was planted by the individuals who were being sued. I gotcha. I gotcha. So, Tie this all together. Dean, Attorney Dean A. Strange coming in for this event on Friday. What's his involvement in all of this uh, for folks that might be a little unfamiliar? So over the course of Mr. Avery's relationship with law enforcement, okay. he has a number of attorneys. Um, of those, Mr. Strang is one of them. He's probably um, the most involved, short of one of the smaller, um, smaller local defense attorneys who is in the series. She talks quite often in the series about her relationship with Avery, his family. But uh, Mr. Strang is clearly the most prominent and most well nationwide now for defending Mr. Avery during the murder suit, during the murder litigation. So he's going to come in and talk about 
some of the systemic failures. What is, what, without giving everything away, because we want people to attend and tickets are on sale, $10 for students and $20 for the public. They're available at the Wyoming Union Information Desk, Buchanan Center for Performing Arts Box Office, or by going online to uwyo.edu slash fine arts. Uh, talk a little bit about just um, what what he is going to be touching on in terms of some of the topics in this moderated discussion Friday night. So I don't know that I can give away anything since Mr. Strang has been so popular. Okay. And any YouTube request will show him. He's been on CBS. He's been on ABC. He's been on CNN. He's everywhere. Um, and so anybody that Googles him is going to see him. So I don't know that I'm giving away anything <laughs> new. Uh, my plan is to have Mr. Strang talk a little bit about himself because in all of the interviews that I've watched so far, we ground him in making a murder as though there was no other Mr. Strang before that incident. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about him. I want to talk a little bit about how he first came into contact with Mr. Avery and the relationship that they built. Because clearly, there's a relationship that exists between him and Mr. Avery. As he talks through his concerns about Mr. Avery's life, uh, the unfairness of the investigation, there's a relationship built. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Obviously, that'll lead us a little bit to the national uh, issues that face criminal justice now, much like in many other institutions. And then ultimately, I want to kind of get his feel for the characters that are played out during the series. Okay. Because he hasn't really had an opportunity that I can tell to talk specifically about certain individuals. So I want to ask him about the prosecutor cats, right? <laughs> what was his thinking about him? I want to ask him about some of the other individuals as well. We're joined in studio this morning, Daryl Jackson, a professor at the University of Wyoming. And, you know, we've got a big event coming up Friday night. Again, it's at the College of Arts and Sciences Auditorium, and tickets are on sale. And uh, he's he's a, from he's an attorney in Madison, Wisconsin, but he's got some, some different books out there, it sounds like, as well. He's not afraid to kind of uh, put his thoughts down on paper, it sounds like, and share his opinions. As you mentioned, he's been everywhere, it sounds like. Well, the first thing I read uh, uh, when I... I got into the national news about him was somebody called him a sex symbol. So that was the first sign that he was not your normal attorney. Very few people are going to walk up and say that attorney is a sex symbol. So Mr. Strang clearly has reached a different level <laughs> of public uh, appreciation than okay. most attorneys do. So, um, you know, he, he has a lot of experience in a variety of, of, of uh, cases and, and background that clearly lend his thoughts about the criminal justice system. Um, and he seems to present them, from what I've seen so far, in a fairly, you know, um, in a fairly well thought out manner. He doesn't just blurt out generalities that have become known through the media. He has a very complex thought behind them, and I look forward to having him dialogue about that. Uh, again, we're talking with uh, Professor Daryl Jackson from the University of Wyoming here. Uh, D Attorney Dean A. Strang coming in. Uh, he'll speak at Friday night at 7 o'clock. Um, in terms of this moderated discussion, how much audience participation do you want? How much feedback and, and, and kind of probing from the folks in the audience do you want to have happen on Friday night? So my goal is to be their voice. I'm sure that okay. everybody in the audience would love to sit with Dean Strang and just talk to him. I'm sure they have a thousand questions. So my goal is to be their voice. I know that concerts and conv convention, convocation, convocations, convocation, that group has been collecting questions for days now. I know they okay. started at least a week or two ago, and they've been collecting questions. Um, we've sent it to our students at the law school so they could send them questions, and they'll be kind of pulling all the questions together and creating some kind of grouping of the questions because we can't answer, we can't ask everybody's questions. So the goal is he and I will talk for about an hour, seven to eight or so, and then all of those questions that we get that have been pulled together. We'll spend the, the last half hour just pulling those questions into a format that we can ask him. The audience would like to know X. The audience would like to know Y. So to the extent that we can, their questions will be very involved. In so, so we're going to try and limit this to 90 minutes. You said a 30 minutes over the last 30 minutes. You know how attorneys can talk, though. <laughs> so this could this could extend a little longer than that. Just uh, just get a forewarning folks in the listening audience. And again, attorney Dean A. Strang coming in uh, Friday night, 7 o'clock at the College of Arts and Sciences Auditorium. Tickets are $10 for uh, students with a valid ID. and That's a valid student ID. And then $20 for the public. And you can get them at the Union Information Desk, Buchanan Center for Performing Arts Box Office, or by visiting UW edu slash fine arts what what more can folks i guess expect from your perspective are you really going to try and push him a little bit on some topics so i think i may push him a little more than others have in the past i don't know the backgrounds of the other people that have asked him um in this kind of format have okay. asked him questions um i come at it from a prosecutorial bend i was an assistant united states attorney in washington dc 
Um, before that, I was an assistant county attorney just outside D.C. and Virginia. So I come at it from a little different perspective. I appreciate um, what he brings as far as his analysis and thoughts. And so I don't necessarily disagree with him, but I want to push him on some of those thoughts. And he and I will will hopefully kind of banter about these ideas. Um, in my classroom, I often say, realize, sometimes I'm playing devil's advocate, not because I disagree with you, but because I want to hear the foundations for your reasoning. And I may do the same thing here. It's just let him know, I'm not that I disagree with you, but let's play devil's advocate. Here's what the other side would say. How would you respond? Well, it sounds like it's been a big spring. I mean, I had uh, Professor Easton and uh, Kurt Spence and uh, Macrina Sharp. They were they had that Spence historic yeah. law trial last Monday. We had them in the studio here about a week and a half ago. It sounds like some big things going on at the College of Law right now. Uh, talk a little bit about just the curriculum and, and how you, you've gotten involved with it, and how, how you transplanted from D.C. And, and the federal level out here to the University of Wyoming as a professor. Um, you know, the law school is, has got a national reputation for really putting the theory side of law into practice. So our students get a okay. lot of opportunities to really be involved in this is what it's going to be like to be a lawyer before they actually enter into it. And so Dean Easton, who I still call Dean because he hired me when he was the dean, and then <laughs> gotcha. even though he's a professor now, not Dean, I still refer to him as Dean Easton, he was one of, the, uh, one of the foundational people in saying, look, this school is going to become grounded in this idea of preparing our students for the practice of law. They're going to have to know the theory. They're going to have to know the foundations, the Socratic dialogue. But we're going to really focus on making sure our students are ready to practice immediately or soon after they graduate. So all of the activities that go on in the law school are geared around that dialogue of how are we thinking about how law is going to affect society and the world once we get our students out into the field. Now, how did you transition from being in it to now teaching it and, and, and getting behind students, I guess? <laughs> um, I enjoyed my time as a litigator. I really did. But it's a 24 hours, seven day a week job. And I knew there was a time when I needed to stop being in court every single minute of my life. Um, and long story short, I followed my wife, then girlfriend, out from D.C. to Colorado, where she was working as the dean of admissions for their law school. I got my Ph.D., knew I wanted to start teaching, and Wyoming and I found each other, and it was nice. just a wonderful match. It's a great law school that does wonderful things for a great set of students that I don't think are nearly as appreciated as they should be. All right. Well, hey, have fun with this. Attorney Dean A. Shane coming in again 7 o'clock Friday night at the College of Arts and Sciences Auditorium. I thank you so much for coming in and talk about this event, and uh, hopefully you guys get a good crowd out there. Absolutely. My pleasure. I'm looking forward to anybody that comes out. Hopefully we'll have a good time. Again, 7 o'clock, College of Arts and Sciences Auditorium, and uh, tickets are on sale. $10 for students with a valid UW student ID, $20 for the public. You can get them at the Wyoming Union Information Desk, Buchanan Center for Performance Arts box office or by visiting uwio.edu slash fine arts again uw concerts and convocation sponsoring this event but uh mm, professor jackson thanks so much for your time this morning absolutely an honor my pleasure